Assalamu alaikum. Fisa and leave to tell you about the topic of video that is nutrition and digestion. Let's start our discussion with the introduction of nutrition. First of all, we nutrition the process of taking in food, digest, absorb, transport, and then excrete. And using this energy for the growth and metabolism. Now I tell you about the history of evolution in nutrition. In the ancient times, the animals have ability to synthesize their essential molecules in their diet, but with the passage of time, they get routinely based their organic compounds. In this way, they lose this ability. Now move to the next topic. Categories of the animals classified on the basis of mode of nutrition. Autotrophs, they can synthesize their own food. Heterotrophs, they feed on the other animals and plants. Heterotrophs are further classified into three classes. That are herbivores, carnivores, omnivores. Herbivores that can eat only plants. Carnivores feed on the both animals and omnivores feed on both animals and plants. This leads me to the next topic which is the metabolic phase of nutrition in the heterotrophs. Macronutrients that are required in the excess amount in the animal's body, for example carbohydrates, lipids and proteins. On the other side, micronutrients are those nutrients that are needed in the smaller amount. For example, minerals and vitamins. We have discussed the first part and now moving towards the next part which is digestion. Starting from the definition of digestion, the mechanical breakdown of the complex solid foods into the simple soluble forms which can be absorbed by the body cells. Now, the animal strategies for getting food and using this energy. These are continuous and discontinuous feeders, suspension and deposit feeders, herbivory, predation and fluid feeders. Now move to the next slide. Difference between continuous and discontinuous feeders. Continuous feeders, those feeders that are small, slow moving and completely sessile animals, for example, cream and barnacles. On the other hand, discontinuous feeders are those feeders that are large, active and mobile animals, for example, squid. Second one is suspension and deposit feeders. Suspension feeders, these feeds on the organic matter suspended in the water. On the other hand, deposit feeders, organic matter that settles in the bottom. These are following the examples. Third one is herbivory. It is a food getting strategy in which the animal consumption of macroscopic plants, for example, in invertebrate mollusks are these examples and invertebrates like panda. Fourth one is predation. It is also a feeding strategy in which one animal feed on the other animals. Fifth one is fluid feeders. Those feeders that feed on the fluid of the another organisms, for example, mosquito. Now we discuss the diversity of the digestive systems. Firstly, we discuss the invertebrate digestive system. In invertebrates, cnidarians have in excretion and and then flatworms has also incomplete digestive system but slightly advanced. They have mouth, pharynx, gastrovascular cavity.
Nematoid has complete digestive system. The anus was developed. It is much better than the nigerians and in and flatworms. Now insects. Insects has also complete digestive system with the storage organ that was cropped. It also was developed. Now we discuss the diversity of the digestive system in vertebrates. Earlier, fishes have very complex, simple digestive tract, but with the passage of time, the digestive system become more complex. Stomach was developed along with the foldings in the small intestine. Slavery gland was also developed. In the end, mammalians have well developed digestive tract. Next is mammalian digestive tract. Gastrointestinal motility and its control. The process occurs in the gastrovascular intestinal tract, consists of peristalsis and segmentation. The next part is oral cavity and it consists of pair of lips, tongue, slavery glands. Then come pharynx and esophagus. What is pharynx? Pharynx is a common opening between digestive and respiratory tract. And esophagus propels the bolus to the stomach. The next and most important part is stomach and its functions are Store and mix the food received from the sphagus, secrete enzymes, mucus and HCL, etc. Help food to move into small intestine, then small intestine. Its size is 7 to 18 meters in length, 4 centimeters in diameter and large amount of food digest in small intestine like lipids, fats. Then comes large intestine. Most of the absorption of nutrients occur in the large intestine. Now we discuss pancreas in digestion. Pancreas is an organ that lies just venter to the stomach. Pancreatic enzymes complete the digestion of carbohydrates, proteins, and initiate the digestion of lipids. Now, we discuss the role of liver. It includes removal of the amino acids from organic compounds, oxidation of fatty acids, manufacture of bile salts. Now, then comes the role of gallbladder. It stores the greenish fluid called bile that the liver cells continuously produce. Thank you all for watching and understanding this video. Regards in your prayers. Allah Hafiz.